Emma Louise, thank you for doing this interview for my subscribers, but also for, of course, others that are listening in. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Lasse. <laughs> thank you. Or Lars. <laughs> Lars. Uh, oh. Lasse Lars. Lasse Lars, yeah. Lasse is my name, really. So. Mm. <laughs> thank uh, you so much for having me. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a wonderful time when you were visiting me here in Sweden. It was lovely. Yes, to, it to, was. To meet you. And you have such a big heart that are opening up your home and your giving away your, uh, even your bed, giving away to strangers. So thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Maybe I got my bed full of strangers in the future. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I wonder a little bit about, about your life, early life, from your, maybe from your childhood that led you to the point that you're with the work you're doing now. Can you, uh, can you tell a little bit about that? Yes, um, I guess I have had a very ordinary growing up uh, in many ways, but also uh, not so ordinary because my mother, she passed away just a week before I turned two years old. And okay. I have grown up with my father and his, um, his uh, buddies and uh, been growing up a lot on the sea. Okay. And uh, so <laughs> I kind of had a lot of uh, men in my life uh, yeah. raising me. So um, um, I have always had abilities with me, as we could call them. Yeah. Um, I don't call myself, um, well, up to now I haven't called myself anything. I haven't called myself clairvoyant or healer or anything, but to make it easy uh, for people to understand, I guess, yeah. that is my abilities. I'm clairvoyant, yes. I'm a walker through dimensions and I astro travel and I have healing abilities and all that stuff. And they actually came um, up in the daylight when I was quite young. Uh, I remember everything from my childhood from seven years and up. Yeah. Because I have the memory of coming to this earth at the age of seven. Okay. So uh, I remember the soul swap that was done at the time. Um, and I have quite good memories from it and writing about it. And probably it will be a book and if people like to read, they can read it. Yeah. I yeah. look. I look forward to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, so it started really early for you then, as yeah. for many light workers uh, can feel the ability already as really young, uh, but yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. When I was a child, I remember I, I had many friends, uh, uh, especially uh, not friends from school, but friends friends from my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and I had, uh, as I had to state for people when I talked to them, I had physical human friends, but I also had a lot of friends that no one else could see. Yeah, imaginary uh, friends, yes. Imaginary friends. Yeah. Um, I was a lot alone when I was a child. Uh, I liked to be alone because when I walked into the forest or I uh, went down to the sea and went out with a boat, I felt very free, I felt very at ease and in balance with nature, which have been very important for my whole life. Yeah. And I also got in contact with uh, my spiritual friends and my family from my home galaxy. And, um, yeah. and what is your home galaxy? Uh, do you know the name about it? Yes, I am originally from the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda, okay. So, um, but I have, uh, I have had a very, very many lifetimes there, and one lifetime that was very long. Uh, but I have also, before the Andromeda galaxy, I, you could say that, originally I came from a complete different place, which I prefer to just call the white place. 
yeah, okay. because everything is so brighter. And uh, I don't know everything about it, or I don't. I do, I do know, but I do not remember everything yeah, about it, yeah. but I actually think it is the place where everyone is originally from. Yes. So, so it's a little about, uh, you're talking a little about the source. Yes. Uh, yeah. That is light, light and love, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. it is. So, uh, well, I grew up and I became a teenager, and as most teenagers, I started to realize that if I was going to survive in this world, I had to start to be a little bit more normal, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. So I tried to kind of blend in with people and uh, try to be... Uh, as Not everyone else is. as possible, I guess. Yes. But it wasn't easy. So uh, no. I don't think that I have never been kind of normal. No. So <laughs> I think uh, when you're a little, you think that everyone else is the same as you are. Yes. Yeah, because you don't understand that they have a, another perspective on, on things. So when you see something that uh, you think everyone can see the same thing. So, but as you say in teenage, it's a difficult because everyone looks at you and evaluate you all the time. So it's it's a hard time. Yeah. Yes, it is absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, interesting anyway. So so then you grew up and started to. Uh, Work with these abilities you had, I guess, and uh, and in what in what uh, in what way do you perform it uh, f now nowadays? It's, well, yeah. it uh, from my teenagers and up to I guess I was twenty four. Yeah. Uh, when I had my first child. Um, yeah. And there was a long period of time where I tried to just blend in with everyone and I kind of did what I did in secrecy uh, because I didn't want to be judged about it. I was tired of being judged, I was tired of being looked at as strange yes. and yeah. even, even sick, you know. Yeah. So um, when I had my childbirth, uh, the spirits, they, uh, they uh, kind of said that, well, Enough is enough. You are here for a reason, and now it's time for you to start to work. Okay. So I had a very long childbirth. It was uh, lasting three days. Um, during oh. those three days, yes, in the labor room at the hospital. Wow. Uh, I was in a complete different place. Yeah. And I had uh, all this information uh, downloading into me. Yeah. Um, um, I almost said good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good for me. <laughs> yes. Don't need to be uh, present uh, oh. in three days lab labor. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, well, actually, of course, it was painful. I yeah. do remember a lot of it, but yes. I don't. Um, I guess that's another topic then, but I know how we actually can go into labor without having all this pain. Yes. And all this traumatic experience about it because it does need to be that but that's no. another topic for another day yeah but after i had my daughter i started to uh, kind of embrace my true nature again yeah and little by little i started to uh, kind of talk about it around openly yeah and i started to give healings to people and readings to people and everything was kind of in um, in private sessions I uh, never, I never took any money for it. I just did it as a favor for people. Yeah, yeah. And soon people started to talk about me in the town that I'm living in, and started to ask if I couldn't have some circles where people could come and learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started to have a circle, and I think I had, I think I worked with this circle for one year, about. Uh, yeah. a year yeah. and I also worked with another lady and there was a lot of people coming and a lot of people was starting to waking up to their own powers and yeah. uh, what was important for me was that 
I didn't want people to come to me and look at me as a guru because I do not believe in these things. I do not believe in these definitions and names and and titles. Yeah, uh, uh, people often want to put labels on everything and and uh, <laughs> preferable sometimes very bad labels as they call yes. you stupid or something strange or yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I wanted to teach people that you are your own master, you are your own guide, you are your own teacher, and we can all learn from each other. But we can also teach it, uh, teach it, uh, teach it, grow each other's things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Totally. Um, but I felt that uh, I felt that too many people kind of started to look at me like I had all the answers. Uh -huh. So I decided to just uh, uh, quit, to just quit the circle. I just closed it down and said, no, you have to go your own way. You have to find your own answers. Yeah. So they wanted to make you a guru or something like that? Not all of them, not all no, of them, no. but some of them. Yeah. And that was not my intention. No. And when I think that when a true teacher sees something like that is going on, he or she has to stop it. Yeah, it's time to take a step back. Yes, yes it's absolutely. time to withdraw. Yeah, and uh, kind of say that it's time for you to to use your own wings. Yes, so I have my little dog here. She's going down now. <laughs> yeah, Get, getting hot. <laughs> getting hot. Yeah. So, um, and after that, I started on a very deep inner journey for many many years. Okay. And during all these years, I think it's about 10 years, um, I have been on a journey deep inside of my deepest cham chambers, I guess. Yes. I've also been on journeys deep inside of Earth and up in the universe. And, you know, I, when I grew up, my father, he kind of... He kind of protected me from the world. I was not allowed to listen to radio or to listen to to music unless he have had said it was okay uh, I couldn't look at the television um, it, I couldn't read uh, different kinds of book because he wanted me to be as pure as possible oh okay so so, so he's uh, almost uh, build a wall uh, around you to protect you and then you yes. if, if someone do that you can't get out anything and nothing can come in either so it's it's a two-part uh, communication that he in a way put a stop to and yeah, yeah so that must be tough for you also well you know i had my own television yeah so <laughs> it yeah. wasn't so tough no. i never was bored or anything yeah. but um the things that were tough was in my teenager where everyone else they were talking about the uh, musicians and movie stars and things like that and i was like mm, <laughs> i don't know i don't know about them and yeah. i was a little bit ashamed yeah. because there was like this common knowledge that you should have as a teenager yes yes yeah. Yeah. so but except from that to be honest i am very happy that i have been um kept away from the society's uh, um, interaction with my belief system and with my purity because i have now i have had people coming to me and they have said to me that you know and uh, deepak super he's saying this and uh, the, 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 you know, they're they are mentioning all kinds of uh, names that uh, have written all these spiritual books. Yes. And they say that uh, this and this and this, they are talking about the same thing that you are talking about. And, um, and then I kind of get a confirmation that, well, there's something in the things that I am uh, getting from my heart. There's something that's coming from my soul that is actually truth in it. Yes. So I started to, uh, in uh, when I was grown up, I started to uh, really clear myself yeah. and started this journey inside to find what is really truth uh, of what I'm getting down and what is not truth, what is colored and what is, yeah. um, you could call it a program, what is programmed, what is false beliefs and all of this. Yeah. So I started a real hard journey on that. And uh, 
I guess this last two years of my life, I've been pretty much about clear, uh, cleaning out uh, my ego. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because it's very important that you left your mind and your brain shatter outside, but it's not an easy task to do that because it's always on. Yes. Uh, and we got f uh, fed from the outside every moment in on the day. So. So I, I've been there also, so I totally understand what you're talking about. It's a hard work to do, but yes. necessary. Yeah. So, yeah, that sounds really interesting. So now you, you do this on a regular basis or is it, uh, are people coming to you or do you have any place you do this uh, kind of work with people? Well, uh, up till now, I have just helped people that have just come my way, uh, either through friends or through people that have heard about me, yeah. uh, and have just helped people um, and not taken any money for it. I've just done it for free, yeah. um, and I do a lot of light work for the world as well, yes. and for humanity. Uh, and at this moment, I have, um, you know, I'm a I'm an educated nurse. Yes. So I work part time in the ER, and uh, part time I'm writing on my book that's called Through My Eyes. Yeah. And uh, I'm also uh, having a webmaster at the moment, working on my homepage whiteavatar.com. Yeah. And it's coming out in October. And um, uh, what I really want to do is uh, people that's coming to me by their free will, yeah. I want to help them to realize uh, their own potential and their own powers. Yeah. I have uh, so many times in my life uh, been with people that have been completely negative to this stuff and saying that it is impossible what you are talking about, it's impossible, yeah. all these uh, abilities you're talking about. but yeah. After only one session with me, they have actually started to see themselves and yes. experience. Yeah. So I guess it's a little bit what we do, both you and me, is trying to wake up people to the true nature and their mm -hmm. uh, true ability. Because it is the fact that we come into this uh, density and into this life with a memory loss. <laughs> yes. And that's uh, a purpose that we sh come in here to have experience. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now it's time for people to wake up because we're going through this shift, this very, yes. very big shift in the humanity. It never happened before uh, in the mm -hmm. in the same way. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you are a mother also upon all that work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So we are uh, we are like uh, going into this journey of accepting and knowing. Yes. And realizing that all the knowledge that is out there is something that we all can gain access to. Yes. But then I'm not talking about uh, primitive knowledge from the third dimension here on Earth, but I'm no. talking about a very high, yeah. higher information and knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone is uh, capable of getting that knowledge. Yeah, yeah. they can t tap into that. Yes. I, I, I usually call it a big library <laughs> or a yes. database. Yeah. You can tap into it, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Yeah. And, and uh, as souls, we, we all are connected to this information. Yes. And that's so important to start to realize that we are actually souls in a human vessel. Yes. And uh, that, I think, is the most important thing to start with if you are completely new to this. Yes. Is the understanding that we are a soul, and if you if you need to have some kind of definition uh, on what a soul is, then just make a definition of it uh, for your own sake, for your own uh, help. Yeah. To just kind of get it into your your mind. Yes. So uh, because this is all about starting to realize that we have to connect uh, our mind and our heart and connect it to the soul. Yeah. And to what I call the soul string. Yeah. And start to get connection up to the higher level of consciousness that yes. we are going to bring down to this earth. Yes, we, ha we have been taught uh, 
really early in our life that what we see it was uh, is the only thing that it is. Uh, the school teach us to see it uh, in a three D way, and then uh, when you get older, your life is getting very influenced from how your neighbors uh, oh they bought a new car we need a new car and so on so mm -hmm. we are thought is and being held in this as i think also in a way for the elite uh, to keep on having the power over people and having the control over people but i understand now that they are uh, losing that power they have had because people are waking up is that your feeling also that they are waking up in in higher and higher rates now absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. and what is important to understand is that there is this one core of uh, this one core of power in this world yes that is keeping everyone in a, what i call a indu industrialized uh, modern slavery yeah uh, and some have it worse in the slavery than others of course yes uh, and uh, all these uh, politicians around the world right now they are also slaves in this system yes. because they are not actually well some of them are aware of it yeah some groups are aware of it yeah um, but then again, how aware are it? How aware are they as souls? Because they are completely brainwashed and yeah. uh, tempered with and programmed, and they, to be honest, as souls, they are not. They are like captured yeah. in their vessels yes. and forced to do what they are doing. And um, yeah, they are really depressed in their density, so they have no yes. possibility to come out of that. And yes. because the real elite is a very small group <clears throat> on this planet, uh, uh, almost you can count it on your ten fingers. And uh, the real elite that control it all, and yeah. yeah, and it's related very much to money and wealth. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, yeah. <coughs> I was a little no. I was a little judgmental about when I look to US now and the election there I listened to this Trump and thought he must be a crazy man but then I also realized that he is stuck in that but he was telling something that waking people up so I can't just see it negative now because he's contributing to things without any knowledge of it so yeah, yeah. so that's you know uh, uh, Donald Donald Trump he is um, I, I actually said this on uh, uh, the American radio host Ted Mars radio show yeah. out of this world I told him that Donald Trump is like a cosmic clown yes and <laughs> he is and um, when I when I listen to him uh, and of course, I listen to him from a higher state of consciousness. Yes. Uh, I kind of giggle a little bit about it because I can see that his soul is very much into this. Mm -hmm. And the things that he's saying and doing and even his appearance, yeah. it kind of make people really have a, a laugh. Because yeah. this, is, this is like, this is so stupid. Uh, is it really real? Yeah. And that is what we are going to to feel now about the election this is so stupid is this really real yeah. and it's not because no. the election is not real it's absolutely not no. um uh, they, are, they are not elected uh, you know the humans in, in no, no. definitely in not. this world absolutely not i mean uh, you can just look at hillary clinton that has i don't know how many super delegates she has before even the election has started yes. it is and one uh, super delegate has three votes and it's impossible for anyone else to win it's impossible it's just yeah. a stage game yeah so donald trump and even hillary and everyone they are just in this game yeah they and are they are puppets they are yeah. puppets yes. and they're doing a, re a really good uh, character i think but this is all going to end now yeah. And uh, I think also the American people are waking up for this now that this uh, system that I have been involved with for so many years is not, it's futile to keep keep that going. And uh, we, we could see that when uh, a man like Bernie Sanders came into the game and he really 
shake the people <laughs> up uh, and wake them up in a way to see what's going on and activating them uh, in a very good way, I think. Mm. Uh, of course, he was never to going to be the president, but then again, the president has really not any power. Uh, they are controlled. Like a puppet on a string. Yeah. They are. Yeah. The, it's so it's so funny because you know the president is just a definition. It's yes. a definition of a role. Yeah. That is played by the one who is the president. No, 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 no. 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 It's someone behind, behind. Yeah. Yes. And it's just like in in Sweden and Norway and Denmark and everywhere in the world. Yes. They, they are not in charge. No. The one who is on the picture are not in charge. No. You know, so and and we know this. You know this. Yes. Most of the the world are starting to knowing this now, yes. and just you can just look at alternative media as YouTube, uh, which is fantastic at these times, and even Facebook too. Yes. I mean, we have kind of taken their weapon and turned it around, uh, yeah. and we are using it kind of against them yes. in a good way. Yeah. With good intentions. Yeah. Not so, violent. Not violent at not all. Not violent at no. all. And you know their little games are starting to just crumble. Yeah. And we see it every day. They're crumbling. Yeah. And when they realized this, they of course wanted to stop uh, this internet and try with whatever uh, me method they had to stop this, but it was too big already to stop, and uh, it's also futile. I, I say that word a lot, it's futile to resist, be because it's going to happen, even if you don't want to <laughs> have it to happen. So, And even uh, <laughs> the military and the governments and all them getting aware of this now, that this yeah. exponentially growing uh, awareness of people they they are scared because they they have had the power or the yeah the power for so many years but so many of them are scared so if they are really into this they can be a little dangerous uh, so i also w w want to say to people that be aware where you say things and what you say sometimes don't be don't be scared don't get into that but be aware of it. Uh, I have been followed by cars and so on, but I know I'm protected, so I'm not scared. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, they will not be able to hold on to this thing for any longer time now anyway. So just, no. you know. So no, just, just uh, I used to say, the, the one you hate most, send them love and say, I love you anyway, and it will change directly. Maybe they don't love you, but they will change. That really is going on now. So I like that. Yes. And, uh, you know, we have so much help. I mean, yeah. people need, and that, that I think is the most important message I have ever had to come with. And that is the souls in human vessels at this time, most of them are such big souls. We have been coming to this earth right now for a very, very big reason, and that is to free humanity from this game going on. Yeah, this program they're running. Yes. This program. Yeah. And people just need to realize what we can actually do. I mean, we can shoot lightning bolts from our hands. Yes. We can lift water, we can lift earth, we can. There's so much we can do. We can instantly heal we can uh, transport ourselves just through our minds yes i can just transport myself to you yeah. so we just need to start realizing this and i will just put the coffee on before you come yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah that's right and telepathically communicate with each other i mean yeah and you know all these rules and also this this other thing that I'm just burning about is this game of incarnation, the incarnation game and the karma game. Yeah. People need to be aware that, you know, as a soul, as a pure soul with that high pure consciousness, we don't need karma to keep us in change. No. We don't need laws to keep us in change because as a pure soul, 
with that consciousness, you know what to do or what not to do. Yeah. You know, because you know you don't go over to your neighbor and kill him or no. uh, rape a child or steal or anything no. and in that consciousness in that state of our consciousness we don't need to do all these things either because we don't have these needs no because we are in balance with our emotions yeah that, that that kind of view that some people have that this is going on all the time of course a lot of children getting abused and and also Adults are uh, thinking about people in jail and so on. They are uh, suffering from rape uh, and such things. And um, it's uh, very important for us now to to tell about this going on. Because as soon as you are aware of this program that is uh, running through us, through our brain, <laughs> uh, uh, as soon as you are aware of it, it's starting to change. Because it's automatically so. And I think also that karma is misunderstood many times. It's not meant for suffering and uh, it's not meant for uh, judgment. It was meant for us to go into experience. Uh, so the karma has not that role and are not longer in play, I, I, I think. Uh, and uh, we can see that on the new generation coming in, in now with all these indigo children and whatever label we put on that. They are totally open in another way that early generation was and they are not playing into this uh, program. And uh, I think also many, many children now, they like to put uh, labels on them because they don't fit in uh, into the uh, form. They come in, uh, we call them autistic or HD and all those. Uh, the letter children. Yeah, the letter children. But I want to enforce this to people out there that have children that are, uh, it's, it's a good thing to diagnose them sometimes because you can get help in another way uh, from the society. But you as a parent need to be aware of that they are your special they are in need of protection from this program running and so as a parent we have a much bigger responsibility to the, those children. I have talked to people that have uh, autistic children around them and, and I said uh, don't spread that anxiety to that child that you feel uh, we can think how how will this ch child cope in the world? And I say, it's going to be just fine as okay. soon as you starting to pr protect them. Maybe not as your father did by putting up a wall, but be aware of who they are and what they are, because they are also much more than just a, a autistic child. I don't like labels at all, so yeah. Oh, I, I think that I, I, I don't either like uh, labels. No. I mean, they're just a definition and humans are kind of... Uh, we have lived for so uh, so long time in a 3D dimensional thinking way yeah. that we need a definition to understand something. Yes. But something we just cannot understand from a 3D, uh, 3D thinking yeah. uh, way. We need to understand it from a higher consciousness. Yes. And so we need to be a little bit patient right now and start to work with our inner uh, darkness and inner light yes. and get balance in our inner light and darkness and realize that emotions need to be in balance yes. in these times. And when we are starting to get balance in ourselves, we will start to look at all these children around us in a different way because I mean look at the society today yes it's not normal no no this is not healthy everyone no. can see that I mean hello you are growing up uh, you are getting educated and you are supposed to work yeah. uh, almost all day long yeah. to be able to give food on the table clothing yeah. and activities for your children yes. school childcare uh, medical care, uh, having a car that is running, yeah. uh, polluting the environment, having a house to live in, and maybe you have uh, two hours or so a day with your children. Yeah. 
what's the point of bringing up children today? Yeah. I read an article that we, uh, in average, spend about 14 minutes uh, in in a in, with our children in a meaningful way. The other other time we just uh, say to them, wait a little bit, little later, little later, yes. come yes. back later. Yeah. yeah. So Just 40 minutes in, in 24 hours, that's not much. <laughs> that's not much. And, no. you know, I, I understand uh, the parents today. I'm, I'm myself a parent, so I yes. <laughs> totally, totally get it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you are so exhausted by the end of the day, and you are supposed to be having a meaningful <laughs> time yeah. with your child in one hour or so. Yeah. Uh, you are just exhausted. So it's not strange that the children are diving into their iPads or computers no. or Pokemon games or whatever. Because, I mean, even the parents do that because everyone are so exhausted by uh, running around in this hamster wheel. Yes. But Ex it is a choice because we, if, we, everyone, if everyone is starting to boycott this. Yeah getting out of this, yes. starting to move out into all these beautiful ecological communities that are starting to grow up all around the world. Yes. I mean, everyone, you can just start Googling in your neighborhood or in your own country or whatever country you like to live in yeah. and start Googling it and you will find communities. Yes. And just go. I yes. mean, leave all that 3D beep, beep, beep behind. Okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, totally. I say this over and over again that you just stop for a second, sit down and be quiet and listen to yourself and say this to yourself. What am I doing? What make me happy? And m maybe you can be happy when you buy the car for a couple of days and because the, you get the attention from your neighbors and your friends. Oh, you have a very nice car. But that's artificial. So I, I usually say to people, don't buy the couch because it generates that you have to work more for to be able to pay this couch or whatever you buy. But So don't buy into that. And I repeat over and over again in my session many times with Hank, uh, my dear friend from Texas, that uh, reconnect to the nature. It will make you really happy. And I... I have done this thing, like go out and hug a tree and talk to it. And it, it, maybe you, <laughs> it can seem silly, but it's giving energy back and you're connecting back to what you're meant to be. Yes. And you're not meant to be uh, a 3D dimension entity that are in a box running around, running around and go to work, coming home, being exhausted, try to get the children to sleep early because you don't have the energy mm. get out of that totally get out of it yeah. yes and you know there are not there are not one law in this world that are above the universal law or the law of nature yeah there is not one law book in this world that can say that you are not allowed to take your child out of school no and teach it yourself. No, we are here, and we, we have free that. will. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You have to agree with your husband about it, of course. Yes. <laughs> or your wife. Yeah. That would be a little bit easier, but there is actually not a law that no. I'm not giving you. No, we are here as a free soul, and all other things are put on us to yes. uh, to obey. And uh, I feel now that people are starting to shake the shoulder i don't want this anymore yes. yeah exactly. so uh, what are you feeling now that is happening on the planet for the moment because i feel a big big change going on and uh, I, I can feel the expansion of the planet the energies and everything uh, what are your opinion and perspective of this well um as you said earlier, I, I walk a lot in, in, uh, out in nature. I'm out in nature and I'm connecting to it. So I just want to tell you this before I answer your question. Yes. Uh, I'm out in nature and I'm connecting to all the elements. Yes. Uh, I'm an avatar in this world. I'm connecting to the elements. That's my, something I've done my whole life and in many other lifetimes. 